Hey guys, this is Michael from Car Chemistry. In this video, we'll be talking about how to determine the order of the reactants by using the initial rate method and how to write rate laws. We'll start by talking about what a rate law is and then moving on to the definition orders. And then lastly, we'll work through several examples together. So let's start with the definition of the rate law. Let's say we had this sample reaction, 2A plus B forms 2C. The rate law is just going to be the rate equals the rate constant K times the concentration of the reactants, which in this case is A and B. These brackets mean concentration. Raised to the order. So X is the order of A and Y is the order of B. And the orders don't necessarily have to match the coefficient. Often they do not. So just because there's a coefficient of 2 doesn't mean that the order of A is going to be 2. If there's a 1 here, then that means A is first order. And if there was a 2 here, then that means B is second order. So now let's talk about what, the, what do orders mean? What's the definition of orders? So orders indicate how the concentration change affects the, the rate change, how the rate will change in response to a concentration change. Just think of something, it, it's the exponent that you're raising the number to. So for example, if something is zeroth order, then it's going to be raised to the zeroth order. And that means that the change in concentration will lead to no change in rate, because anything raised to zeroth power is just 1. For example, if we're doubling the concentration, then the rate's going to change, because if you take 2 raised to the zeroth power, that's going to equal to 1, so the rate stays the same. Likewise, if you triple the concentration, but it's zeroth order, then the rate's going to stay the same. So just remember, if something is zeroth order, Changing the concentration is not going to affect, affect the rate because you're just raising to zero power, which will give you one. First order, on the other hand, means that a change in concentration will lead to a one to one change in rate. Because, for, for example, if you double the concentration, then that's going to double the rate because then there'll be two raised to the first power. Uh, two to the first power is just two. Uh, likewise, if you half the concentration, then the rate will half. So, first order just means that if you that the change in rate will be the same as the change in the concentration. And the second order means that when you change the concentration, the, the rate's going to be the change squared. So for example, if we double the concentration, it'll be 2 squared, so that'll equal lead to a 4 times increase in rate. Also, if we triple the concentration, then it'll be a 3 squared change, so that'll be a 9 time increase in rate. Now let's take a look at some examples where we figure out the order of, of the, uh, the reaction but with the initial rate method. Here's the first example. We have the reaction A plus B forms product, and then we have a table with three different experiments with the concentrations, the initial concentration, as well as the, the initial rate. So we have to determine the order of A and the order of B, and then we have to write the rate law. So to determine the order of A, we're focusing on determining the order of A, we want to choose the two trials in which the concentration B is not changing. So that could be experiment one, experiment two, because you can see the concentration of B is not changing. Then we look at how the concentration A is changing. And I always like to go from smaller number to bigger number. So look, going from this 2 to 4, 2 to 4 is doubling. So this is the, the concentration is doubling. And then we look at how the rate changes. And the rate is going from 0.8 to 1.6. So that's also doubling. You have a double doubling of concentration and doubling of rate. That just means it's first order because it's a one to one change. Or another way you could think about it, the, the concentration change was 2, we could just raise it to the x power or the x order, and that will equal the change in the rate, which is 2. So that means that x, or the order of A, has to be first order. So we can say A is first order. Then to determine the, con the order of B, we look for the two trials in which the concentration A is not changing. So that could be trial 1 and trial 3, because you can see that's staying the same. And then we can look at how the concentration B is changing from trial 1 to 3 or three to one to go so go from smaller bigger three to three to six that's doubling and then we we can take a look how the the rate's changing is going from 0.4 to 0.6 so that's an increase of four times and if you to, to determine that what you could do is you could do 1.6 the final divided by initial 1.6 divided by 0.4 will give you four so the change in concentration was two we'll raise it to the x equals the change in rate which is 4, so then that means that x would have to be 2, and then that means b would have to be second order. And you can see that right here too, when you double the concentration and the rate quadruples, and that means the second order. So now that we have the order of both a and b, we can write the rate law. So then the rate law would just be rate equals the rate constant k times the concentration a raised to the first order. 
times the concentration B raised to the second order. And that's the, the overall rate law for this reaction. Let's take a look at another example. In this example, once again, we have the reaction A plus B forms the product, and then we have the table of the three different experiments, the, di the different initial concentrations of each experiment, and the dif different initial rate of each experiment. So we'll start by finding the order of A, and to find, once again, to find the order of A, you find the two experiments in which the concentration of the other reactants stays the same. So the two trials in which the concentration B stays the same will be trial one and trial two. You can see that it's not changing here. Then we look at how the, the concentration is changing, going from smaller number to bigger number, so 0.04 to 0.08, that is increasing at two, and then 9.6 times 10 to the negative six to 1.92 times 10 to the negative five. We, we can just take this number, divide it by that number, and that will give us a change of two as well. So that means since the concentration is doubling and the rate's doubling, that's going to be first order. And once again, you can figure that out by taking the change in concentration, 2, raised to x equals the change in rate, 2, so that x would have to be 1. That means A is going to be first order. Then for B, we got to figure out, we got to pick the two trials in which the concentration A is staying the same. So that could be trial 2 and trial 3. Let's take a look at how the concentration of B is changing from smaller to bigger. So 0.02 to 0.04, that is doubling. And then this right here is, uh, it's also doubling. So you could take the final number divided by the initial number. And once again, since it's double, you double the concentration and then the rate changes. If it's a one-to-one -one change, if, then that means it's gonna be first order. So that means B is also first order. Then that means that the overall rate law would just be rate equals K times the concentration A times the concentration of B, both raised to the first order. And that's how you can determine the order of the reactants using what we call the initial rate method and how to write the rate loss. Now there are times in which the, you can't use the shortcut where you, because there might be, uh, you, can't, you can't find an experiment in which the concentration of one of the reactants stays the same. So if you have a situation like that, then you have to use the full method of dividing two rate loss by each other, which I'll talk about in the next video.